Well, 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 y'all. When I turn this camera over, y'all going to notice something different about a girl. So, I am walking to work. But as y'all can tell, I am dressed down today. So, once again, it's never a darn on dull day with this job, honey. Child, this is more interesting than darn on Papa John's. Papa John's didn't put me through, put me through these darn on motions, honey. Da da da, Papa John's. Ooh, child, I didn't even have these issues with Papa John's, honey. And I dealt with nothing but like teenagers and shit. But yeah, y'all. For the very first time. For the very first time. Ooh, they darn gonna get this house cleaned up over here, well. Yeah, I'm being nosy. Um, but anyways, I'm going down to this university, right? I'm not going to my actual job. It's my job, but I'm talking with the the manager, the hiring manager, and the one of the the main hiring manager. Cause we ain't trying to get Mr. Fine. <laughs> we ain't trying to get Mr. Fine manager involved in this. If we can so help it. So why do I got these two in on this? I don't know. Let me see if I can walk straight down. See the thing is, since I'm not walking to the uh my job, which is in the square, the shopping square, I don't have to necessarily cut right here and go and go out that way. I can possibly keep on walking straight forward, but they done not so many trees and stuff down and they doing construction. I don't know if it's safe for me to walk through here, but we're going to see. Shit, I don't think they're going to mind me being about five minutes late anyway. Because it's going to be a little bit of a intense talk because I actually supposed to be working today. So, by the time y'all see this video, y'all would have seen the aftermath which brought us up to this point where oh shoot it ain't no other turn before we get here because technically i could walk through it but it's so much darn on dirt okay it is a turn y'all let me show y'all when, when i used to walk to my former position i used to go straight down that way but since they knocked so many trees down they got the bulldozer that way. Let me see if I can zoom in for y'all. Y'all see what I'm talking about? It's like I don't want to have all that dirt on my shoes as I'm walking into the workplace. So instead, we're going to make this turn right here. But yeah, y'all. Last night... Oh, why is all these dogs loose today? Oh, great. This one's in a fence. Okay. Hey, boo. Uh-uh. And then they fences are so low. The dog can theoretically jump the fence if you wanted to. But you know, a girl stay ready so she don't have to get ready. Cause Lord knows I ain't trying to mace nobody's dog. Now I know some of y'all be like, well Dee, you should be on the safer side and just mace because it'll be a further distance. But then it's like, well somebody has to then put the water in the dog's eyes and flush the dog's eyes out for 15 minutes. And it definitely ain't about to be me. So let me just stun you for about two, three minutes until I get to a safe enough distance <laughs> to where I need to be. But yeah, y'all. Oh, wait a minute, we passing by somebody. I get into the talk, but conversations. Nothing happened last night. Hello. Hi. But yeah, conversations that happened last night at the job <laughs> in regards to who I am. Now, I'm not opposed to people asking a question, right? It's just the way that the question was posed. 
And of course, y'all know where I'm getting at with it. The gender identity of it all. And like I said, it's like, why did they thought it was okay to do it in such a way where it was like everybody just swarmed around? I, I guess they just eliminated people coming to me casually one by one and me feeling repetitive. But see, I wouldn't mind that approach instead because it would have been more isolated. It wouldn't have been overwhelming. Because what they don't know is I deal with agoraphobia real heavy. Now, I mastered my agoraphobia, I told y'all. In the sense of, I now can work in front of the house. And I, I can work, you know, close up on people, large numbers. I can go to a concert again. I can go to, you know, large events and not feel, you know any sort of anxiety however the agoraphobia is still there because it's not necessarily a hundred percent cured it, certain things can trigger it to come back up and one of those and that day was just a major trigger for me between that and the young boy asking me and then that awkwardness of closing and then the conversation with the manager with the darn going supervisor and then I walk in home and I can get in the schedule. Then I sit down and talk with y'all. And I'm looking at the schedule. And y'all just seeing my array of emotions all in real time processing all of this. Then thinking the demon was going to possibly be home too. Thank goodness she worked the, uh she worked last night and she worked the uh she uh, she going to work tonight. Cause that just would have threw me for a loop. That would have threw me for a loop if, um, if she was off those days. And yeah, also a little bit I was spoiled. I was darn going, <laughs> looking forward to them back to base. She done reminded me real quick, don't get too used to no consistent days off. But hell, I thought, shit, you ain't gave me my schedule. Amongst other things, it's been a week I ain't get my darn on ID. I assume that hell you you done broke all these darn on regulations. Uh, go ahead and put me on a set schedule, but no, nope. everybody got a rotating schedule, so I got to get used to that ish. Now on the petty level, this darn gonna messes up my darn on interviewing schedule because. I know now I'm starting to get a sense that, oh, who done had a memorial over here? I see candles. Lord, I hope it wasn't for the damn shooting that happened the other day. Y'all remember the other day somebody was shooting as I go to work, as I was heading to work. Once again, never a damn dull day, y'all. And of course, I got my phone off of airplane mode. But, so I got phone calls coming in. But yeah, y'all, all of that just overwhelmed me. And I was already looking forward to it. I was like, okay, let me, I, I know once I finish this day, I don't have to deal with them until Sunday. Because I got Friday off because of my appointment. And she wanted to act brand new as if she forgot. But she created this schedule, right? I was like, uh-uh, she created these hours on the spot. Because it was like, you, you talking about you had to see last night. And then instantly you don't sent me a me uh uh you don't sent me the schedule where it's conveniently me closing every single night. And I even had to tell y'all, well, what the LV stand for? She talking about it's a typo, it stands to close. Now me, I later on thought, oh, last visit. So that means after we service the last customer, that's what I was thinking. Ooh, somebody got that Mary Jane. Not me, y'all, over there. But, ooh, just smoking that good old loud out here today. Huh? Don't get it on. Child D1 already going through motions. Don't have me coming up into this meeting with a contact high. Woo! But anyways, yeah, y'all, with all that last night, I said, uh-uh. Give me a, I need this day off. Hell, I had to even take me a darn on telehealth appointment this morning. And shout out to darn on telemedicine. Honey, I had to darn on consult with the psychiatrist. 
about this issue. Because I was like, damn, I was doing so well and here they are going to go throw the monkey in a winch with this bullshit. Oh, look like I still might be arriving on time, y'all. Damn, I be walking faster than I think I be doing. But anyways, well, that and we don't have to travel as far of a distance because we're not traveling to the um to the square we're traveling on this campus to this woman's office or whatnot but yeah it's like i selfishly wanted this day off and then oh they even teased me with during on going home early right because the supervisor was like oh there's a lot of people back there it was four of us right which I don't know how that constitutes as a lot because technically it's supposed to be four of us anyways. Because I told her last Wednesday there should have been some estrogen to balance all that ish out. So we had the two guys back there, but one of them was one of the guys that I got to know later on. It wasn't the same exact crowd from last week, except the one boy who apparently he's a training manager. I mean, you know, a training team lead. It's like, that's another thing to get to, this, this chain of command shit. It's like, honey, this a, is this a small restaurant. Do we have to have all these damn different labels and titles? The team lead, the student manager, the regular manager, the supervisor, and I'm going in order from low to high end. So you got the entry level employee, the the uh, the student team lead, the student manager, the manager. I I, I want to say it's two supervisors. Um, the hiring manager, and then it's the one that oversees all of the ones, all of the uh company that we over, and then it's the head head uh manager. D head manager, the Mr. Fine manager, we're going to call. Y'all ain't seen me walk this darn on path in some years, y'all. Who deja vu, honey, but this ain't a good deja vu because we got to have a serious conversation. Because, like I said, I wasn't. I, I, I'd rather go on incog. Uh, hell, not incog Negro, but incog training. But we're going to just say it like that because it's like with me darn going being flatsy patsy. Me being who I am, I thought I wouldn't have to deal with it. It's like I don't ask, don't tell policy. And I know it's like, Diva, you 30. Why are you putting yourself in the closet? Because it's like, I just came here to work and now I'm going to get my coins. That's it. The least amount of controversy I can get in. You know, ooh, come on, rims. But it was like the least amount of controversy I could deal with, the better. Hello. But, yeah. So it's a whole lot, whole lot going on, y'all. And it overwhelmed me. And now we here about to have these, because she wanted to call me in. this, And it would have put me on essentially a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Hell, if she would have had her way, she would have had me working Friday, too. Saturday, Sunday. I was like, oh, now we about to. See, that's another thing we got to get uh, clear. It's like, oh, are we about to borderline violate work labor laws in more ways than one? Because number one, y'all already was working me to the close. And I think they done caught on to that shit. That, oh, we consistently up in this darn old bitch cleaning to past 8 o'clock. You, you, you can't darn on manipulate my time. So I'm working six hours, but I'm not getting my breaks. So, oh, that's why she conveniently now got me three to close. So no matter what happens, I only work five hours. And that's the irritation for me. It's like, don't have hours. Have me darn on, you know, give me six hours. Is that too much to ask? I don't think that's too much to ask, y'all. Because like I said, I'm not asking for more hours. It's like adjust the hours. For me to work the darn on six hours or whatnot. 
it's been a minute i'm trying to figure out do i yeah i turn it this next um turn right here but yeah y'all we about to have this conversation see where my future lies with this company i think ultimately what would be best for me is what i said earlier is I can still work over there because it's like I learned enough. I know enough of the people well enough. And ain't no individual really pissed me off. The one that irritated me the most, and I don't know what it is with me and these darn old masculine lesbians that just don't get along when we work equal, you know, equal staff. It's like my, my upper management be good. It be my folks that is the same status as me that's on the L side of the spectrum that be with the bullshit. But even with her, she's ultimately all right. And I think if my hours are reduced as far as not having to see her as often, and once again, the situation is not toxic at all, thank goodness. But it's approaching irritable enough where it's like, yeah, float me around. Why everybody else get to float around to different jobs? And y'all know I'm familiar with the, the, with the Chick-fil-A and y'all don't want to put me over at Chick-fil-A. What, what's the reason? Y'all got a whole new staff. I only had issues really with one staff member. And that staff member is now gone. So it really shouldn't be no issue with putting me over here. And then here's the benefit as far as clothes and stuff is concerned. Cause they give me two standard shirts by default, right? Now, I already still got my other two shirts. I already still got my other two shirts um, from when I worked here last time because the benefits of these shirts is they don't got the, the, the name of the company. They're easy to throw on. You don't have to earn them or whatnot. So it's like, oh my goodness, the darn going to benefit of me just tossing on that red shirt. Y'all done saw me wear that red shirt plenty of times outside of this job. They done held up. You Shit, I've been gone from this job for some years. And they have still held up quite well. So between the two shirts that I already got and the two more that they give me, honey, that's four shirts. That got me covered for the week. And then if they float me over there, it's like I can get away with doing laundry once a week instead of twice a week. But anyways, y'all, I'm now here. They done texted me, so... Let me get off and I will tell y'all what gonna happen. Okay, y'all, I'm back. So, I got my job still. <laughs> I guess I should be happy on that one. That a bitch ain't fired. Because I know they was gonna be like, okay, this bitch is doing too fucking much. She, she, it's like she ain't really learned everything, anyways. Let's get on out of here. But, no, they was very understanding. Now, once again, now, y'all, we, uh, see, this is why it would, I, I need to go live with y'all as soon as I can. Because, honey, it, it's best if I talk this out with y'all. I don't know why it's so awkward for me, now in my 30s, still disclosing who I am. And like I said, probably because, like I said earlier, I feel more comfortable if I don't have to darn gonna deal with the tough conversations. If I can just ease on by, you know, that'll be the best thing for me um, to do. As opposed to, you know, people feeling like they have to walk on eggshells in regards to, you know, how they address me by title now she touched on it a little bit as far as pronouns and stuff is concerned but i don't think she knew the reference in it towards me really because she kept calling me darn on sir honey but once again she was introduced to me i mean you know she was i was introduced to her as sir at the time i have since now started the transition and see this the awkward conversations us tea girls be loathing when it comes to the workplace but see with a girl like me it really comes with territory because i'm not 
I'm not about to go through that darn going getting glammed up shit. Like I like my skin to breathe. I'm not I'm, I'm not going to feel like I, I should be compelled to wear some silken. Now granted, for multiple reasons, because I don't want my hair smelling like roast beef and shit throughout the whole day. Number two, I don't got the closet space at this current apartment. And t at least until the demon gets gone. And then I can use her bedroom as extra space. But yeah, right now, I don't got no darn gold space for no extra wigs and shit. So y'all gonna keep saying old uh, 3B curly until this situation changes. Oh, hello. But yeah, y'all gonna see 3B curly until the situation changes. Uh, and then number three, it's like I shouldn't feel compelled to do so. Hell, I wish I, shit, I should've asked them what was the fucking dress code in regards to, because it's like we got to wear a head net on anyways. And that wig be darn gonna so goddamn draining to me. It's like, if I can wear this to work, I would be so happy. I'd be so happy and content if they let me come into work with my turban on, but they probably won't. Shit, I don't know why I didn't think, because we was too busy getting into the darn gone nitty gritty of the topics. But yeah, y'all, I pretty much touched on everything without saying it. Like I did mention my upcoming surgeries. Cause I said, well shoot. I know I'm gonna probably be here for at least one of them. Hold on. Of course y'all, I always have to bump into at least somebody I know. But thank goodness I'm getting good at this darn gonna pause in the camera without having to shut the whole camera off. But yeah, y'all. It's like, these are awkward conversations. Cause I know I'm not the only one that goes through this anxiety shit when it comes to having to deal with the gender disclosure, disclosure in the workplace. And like I said, I make it easy on people, honey. You can call me Uncle Clifford 2.0 if you want to. Hell, as long as you not... See, my thing is this, fuck the gender pronouns. As long as I'm darn gonna be treated with some courtesy, respect to what not, honey, call me sir, him, non-binary, they, them, whatever. Y'all, we got to pause this camera one more time. I swear, y'all, we're going to get to a point where we don't have to darn gonna keep pausing this camera. Hell, besides, my lips are getting chappy anyways. I need to put on some lip gloss. Okay, y'all, that should be the last time we have to pause this damn camera, hopefully. But, I, hell, I ain't had much to really give y'all an update on. Because everything else we'll talk about in the midst of the live stream... Which I'm going to have to push back to next week. But we were going to finally darn gone. But the major issues that I did get out the way was. Was the brake requirement. Because I really do need to see a nutritionist. In regards to why I do be getting so light. And once again I already know it's associated with my Crohn's disease. But here's where it gets complex gastroenterologists don't really specialize in the nutritional aspect of how to treat somebody with Crohn's. They always, you know, want to put you on medications. And it's like, mm -mm, don't put me on those steroid medications. So, now, I got to not only see the oncologist as far as my, you know, making sure everything is still in the clear, the gastroenterologist, that works in conjunction with the oncologist because of the Pacific cancer I have to deal with, uh, you know, have to look out for in addition to my Crohn's disease. Both of that deals with the colon. So both of those doctors have to work side by side together. But the nutritionist, to make sure, because my, my autoimmune disease is triggered by the foods, so I really need to get with a nutritionist 
to darn going do a food test on me to see what foods are really safe for me and what foods are not safe for me at all. I also went into detail about the surgery. Well, I went in details, and I think they got what I mentioned when I said I'm going to have surgery on the throat, and then I have one surgery that's not going to, that's going to forbid me from lifting my arms up too high, and I can't lift no more than like five pounds for the first two weeks or so. So I think they already knew that was cold before I'm about to get breast implants at the end of the year. But that is it, y'all. That's my awkward conversations with them. It's gonna get even more awkward as the days come forward because now I got to face these employees when I darn gonna go to work Saturday. Now I show, I tell y'all how that shit works out. But that is it, y'all. Feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see y'all some more videos. Let me go in this store and get me something to drink.